Bows. Bows. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. Oh, you didn't we put a new on? We be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, none, you know, my dad walk on. But first of all, hold on. I want to let y'all know follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, we're on it. The most important one right now, though, I want you to go ahead and pull up is our Patreon page because that's the only place you're going to find our full length interviews after a while. You won't find it on YouTube anymore. We've been spoiling y'all on YouTube, but that's going to end very, very soon. But for a small membership fee, you can go ahead and subscribe on our Patreon channel. Thank you in advance. Boy, she charging y'all up, man. She trying to set y'all up for the next episode, <laughs> man. Listen, man. Hey, man. We got a guy here today. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here. Man, he's dope, man. This guy's a comedian. Um, I seen this guy last night, man. Uh, him and Eddie Griffin, man. And it's just a dope thing to be the hung out with this guy here, man. Hulk, the comedian, is in the building. Yo, what's up, man? There Appreciate y'all for having mm. me, man. Man, hold on. Man, um, but, man, just uh, honor and a pleasure to have you on the show, man. Appreciate, um, appreciate we, it. We ask a lot of serious questions. We want a lot of serious answers, man. Most definitely. So it's going to be a live show, man. Let's get to it. Let's get it. Okay, for me personally, anybody who sits in that seat, I like to know your background. Your art and your craft is awesome, but I like to know where you came from to get to where you are and the struggles you went through. So you say you're from South Carolina? Palmyra, South Carolina. Okay. Um, raised with your mom, dad, siblings? I was raised by my grandmother. Grandmother? Yeah, my, yeah, my mother had me at a very young age. And, How old was she? Uh, she was about 13, 14. Wow. 13, 14. She had me at a young age, and my grandmother gave her a choice. You know, mm -hmm. you can keep him, or you can get rid of him and finish school, or you can, you know, you know what I'm saying, you can just give him to me, and I'll help raise him. And that's what my mother chose to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my mother finished school, and... You know, my grandmother raised me, and, you know, here I am. Was your grandfather there, too? Yeah, my grandfather was there, but he worked a lot. You mm -hmm. know, he was a very hard-working man. Um, but he made the time. He made the time to show me the skills, you know, to be a young man, to Damn work hard man. and do everything right. I need to do and, um, you know, make it happen for my family. So, and you're the only child? Uh, no, I got a brother and a sister. I got a 24-year-old brother and a 10-year-old sister. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah my you mother. sound like me because my brothers are 10 and 12 years older than I am, but you're like way different. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 crazy. I think, to be honest with you, I think my mother was like, I'm going to give it another shot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was, you know, I was a little bad growing up and my brother was... <laughs> He, you know, he was just him, and then my mother was like, "Okay, I guess I'll just start over again." And now I got a ten year old sister. Oh you know? wow! So. so where where's your dad? Do you know your father? Because uh, I know never they, knew my father. Never knew your father. Never knew Did my your father. mom tell you his name actually? Um, no, I never asked. You nev I never? I was never curious. I never, I, I never was curious because I had, you know, I your had my grandfather. grandfather. So my grandfather, he, you know, he stepped in and played that role. So I think it's a guy thing because us females, we'd be like, um, I need to know who my dad. Even if I can't find him, I need to know the name. I need to make sure I'm not dating my siblings over here or my cousin. So right. Um. Well, you know where I'm from. It's a small town, so pretty much everybody's related to everybody. Mm. So I never really <laughs> dated nobody in my town because I was like, I didn't know who all I was related to. But right. I had, you know, my family's real big, so. My, my, you know, my family stayed all on one road. So all my mm. uncles and aunts, everybody stayed on one road. So I had the support system to um, back me up behind everything I was doing. So, That's dope. Yeah. So with your mom having you at 13, um, was she still instrumental in your life? I know she didn't probably know a lot at 13 coming up, but as she got older and was learning, did she, you know, try to be your mom anywhere in that? Yeah, 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 most definitely. Um, You know, of course, you know, she went to school. So, right. you know, that kind of took away a lot of the time. time. But when she did have time, she did make the time to, you know, take me to go do stuff, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to make sure that I was, you know, doing right in school and make sure I had, a you know, a level head. So, I mean, she still was being a mother, but handling her business at the same time. That's and I good. had my grandmother, so everything that's, was cool. That's good to know because normally when um, a mom and a child is so close in age, they usually end up growing up like brothers and sisters rather than mom and child. It, it, it is kind of like that even now to this day. Mm -hmm. um, even though I know that's my mother, we don't really have a mother and son relationship, mm -hmm. but it's more like a brother and sister relationship. But I still respect that as my mom. And, that's what I was going to say. And, you know, everything is cool. Everything is cool. So when that's I say good. mom, you know, in the house, my grandmother answer first. And then my mother be like, which one are you talking to? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so everything is cool. Did yeah. your friends try to hit on your mom? Oh. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, my mom. This boss, <laughs> especially in high school. My mom. My mom looked like she about thirty five years old. <laughs> I look older than my mother. So like, oh, wow. my mother would come to the school and everybody would be like, "Yo, that's your mama. Take out the trash when you get home." And I was like, "Yo, man, chill out, chill out." So I hated for my mother to come to school. I hated for my mother to come around my friends because they would just be like looking at it and talking. I'm just like, "Yo, y'all gotta chill." You know. <laughs> I fought a lot in school because because of my mother. So, mom. so she never like got on me about anything that I was doing when it pertained to her. Because I'm like, well, you caused this. You the one came mm -hmm. up and you should have sent my grandmother up here. You know, right. you, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna say nothing to my grandmother. So everything was cool. Were you scrawny? I was boning. Oh my god! I didn't play no sports in school. Um, I was about a buck thirty, mm. buck thirty all through school, skinny. So. I got by through stuff, not through playing sports, but just joking around, being a class clown, acting a fool. So, so that's how I made my way in, you know, in high school. Mm. Didn't, you know what I'm saying? Didn't really pay attention to the books, but you know. What I'm I, I just want to ask you about. Uh, I jumps up, you know. She does the family thing, you yeah. know. Yeah, I'm cool with it. You from South Carolina? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the country too. All you right. know, couple of my cousins my age, and couple of my aunties my age. You know, stuff yeah. like that. So we count from the same. All my people from the same little old down the road street. Mm -hmm. So we and you, we on the same old thing. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So I know you was raised right. Yeah, you you know how to respect people when you are raised by your oh, grandma. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? They ain't play none of that. <laughs> yeah, they, they ain't play none of that. Nah, Go grandmas make you get away nah, with a lot. Nah, nah but they, nah. but you know respect. You got understand and you got a different type of heart you love differently when grandma raised you grandma gonna mm -hmm. cook for you grandma show you so much love that you basically gonna do right just because you want to be impressive to grandma you don't want to let grandma down no, big facts big ever facts. At, you know all, at all <laughs> my grandmother when my grandmother wake us up at 5.30 in the morning, breakfast cook, you know That's what I'm saying? That's right. Cook, or you come everything. home late and come she'll home, cook. She'll get up and get you a plate. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got them That's three meals a different type of live. Yeah. Like, I know you used to tell me about stories about your grandma and grandpa in the middle of the night talking. Yeah, they wake talk up at in the 3 middle, in the morning. Oh, yeah. In the morning, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can hear them through the wall. I'm thinking there's ghosts in the house. <laughs> <laughs> They are talking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, so how did you get into, um, you first said you was in security, right? Mm, yeah, Like So she was a bodyguard. Yeah. Like, what? how did you get into being a bodyguard? And how old were you? Um, I was about 22. Okay. 31 now. Young. So um, I was about That's 22. Um, I was in the military. I, when, I, when I got in the military, I was walking in the mall and walking in Atlanta. And I met a couple people, and they was like, yo, you want to do security? And I was like, I ain't never thought about it. So then when I got back home. Because you were big at that time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, military oh, yeah. is what blew you up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was tired of being skinny. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I got to, you know, I talk a lot of shit. So I was like, yo, I got to, you know, put some meat on my mm. bones. So once I got out, <laughs> this guy asked me about doing security. So when I got back home, I hit up my local clubs, and I was like, yo, can I do, you know, security or whatever? So I started off in the clubs, and probably about four, five months after that, you know, I started, you know, hanging around all the rappers and stuff when they would come through. So then I got my shot. So um, the first one was Money Bag Yo. Mm -hmm. Money Bag Yo. So Money Bag Yo. You with him. How did his, that happen? So his And that was team, when he was hot at that time? This was when, this was at, a, you know, at like the Early. beginning. Early. Right. He wasn't as big. At the very beginning. Right. So, um, you know. But he still needs team. security. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, the rap world. Security. It's crazy out there. <laughs> so, um. You know, I linked up with his team and they, you know, they flew me to Chicago. I went to Chicago with him and I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? This is pretty cool. Let me, you know, try some other people. So then I just started doing everybody. So anytime everybody came to the city, I was with them. You know, any mm -hmm. rapper, any actor, whatever the case was, I was with them. And I got tired of fighting. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? This not what it is because it's getting real dangerous. You know what I'm saying? People shooting all the time. You know what I'm saying? The rappers, I'm here to protect them, but they got a whole entourage with them and the entourage be setting stuff off a lot. So I'd be like, yo. I'm so just one security, person. you would be fighting all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? For real. I'm like, yo, I'm one person. So what I used to do, I used to get the security at the clubs. I'd be like, yo, let me get five people. And I have them surrounding the stage. Mm -hmm. That way if something mm -hmm. pop off, they going to get to it first. And then I get to it if it make it, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Make it to you. And my wife is like, you know, hey, this not where it's at. You're going to get hurt. You so you married at a young age? I got married at 19. So that's before wow. you went to the, that's or while age. you were in the military? Before I went to the military. Before you went to the yeah, military. I got married at 19. Um, I've been with my wife since I was about sixteen. You know what I'm saying? High school. And yeah, high school. And I almost Aww. got. Let me, almost, let, me, let me hear the story. How you how you how you swept off the feet? <laughs> let me tell you, my boy was walking down the hall, skinny or not, with sweat, he, with plenty of swag. That's one thing y'all better know. He was a class clown, but so he, he was still probably was, cracking he up. Was, he was lean, mean, and he was nah, a sex hey, machine. It didn't go like that. Oh, it didn't go like that at all, man. So look, I had previously met my wife two years before that. You okay. know what okay. I'm saying? So um. I had went to a football game and one of her cousins who I knew, me and him was tight. And he was like, yo, my cousin, you know, asking about you. And I was mm. like, you know, me being cocky, I was like, yo, where she at? You know what I'm saying? 
So I go up to her and give her my number. I was like, you gonna call? She was like, I don't know, I might. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's them. You know, so she called me that night and um, I mean, the rest was history, man. And, yeah. You know, um, my wife is, you know, she's, you know, she's a little bit older than me and, you know, she's real strong minded. You know, she was, you know, a woman woman at a very early age, That's you know what I'm hard. saying? So she already had to mentally you know, uh, strength to be able to guide me on and be able to handle me like, hey, look, this is what you're doing. You need to chill out. You know, she was like that person, you know, in my life. So my senior year in high school, I almost got killed in a car accident. Wow. Mm, so uh, how? Coming from her house, three o'clock in the morning. Man. What? Yeah, man, three o'clock in the morning. Um, I left her house and- And how old um, was you at this time? I was- 17? Okay. By 17. Yeah, yeah, he had just, just got his license. Well, yeah. And well, stuff. Just, oh, oh, yeah, I had got out work. Might have just got some. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That nigga was <laughs> sleeping. Listen, the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the boy was weak. The boy was driving. Hey, look. The next thing look. you hey, know, look. everything getting cloudy. Hey, but baby, on my mind. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to do something. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I had got out work at McDonald's, man. And, you know, I told my grandmother, I was like, yo, I'm about to go to my girl house. And my grandmother told me. She said, Not stay to at the house. Mm. I said, nah, I'll be all right. Now, you know, I had been at work all day. Went over her house, man. And, you know, I left her house. And um, I was gone for probably about an hour and a half. And she was blowing my phone up. But I had them already wrecked by then. So you wrecked out by yourself? Huh? Wait. I was in the country road. And you know the country road yeah. was dark. Yeah. Like, Did you fall asleep? Yeah, I fell asleep. Mm. I fell asleep at the um at the wheel. Um, I hit a ditch, and the ditch, I hit the ditch so hard, the airbag came out and split my head wide open. Wow! Huh? So, yeah, split my head wide open, and I went into this cow field where the cows and stuff would be at. So apparently, so what they told me was, they uh said I crawled from the cow field into the middle of the road. How I got there, I don't know, but they said you had so much adrenaline, you probably ain't gonna remember it. They said when you get that adrenaline, you will do anything. So and somebody come in and so I laid out in the middle of the road for probably about two hours, and it was about bleeding out. No, so it was thirty about 35, 36 degrees. So that the doc, helped. So the doctor said since it was so cold out there, it coagulated the blood right, and stopped me from bleeding. Because my brain was like like you can see my brain and everything. No, like, like, like it was crazy. So I get. I to didn't the, know an airbag can split your head oh, like that. Oh, the airbag that. come out with some force. Oh yeah, the airbag, the airbag will break your face, break your arm, do anything because it came out. It came out so hard, and I had my seatbelt on. The seatbelt popped, and as the truck was flipping, that's how hard it was. So I got a book that has all the pictures in it, and you can see when my forehead hit the passenger door and knocked the door open. That's how hard. Hold on, the pass. Oh, because it popped it through you. As out I was of the flipping, seat. I'm going around. I'm you know I'm right. going around the car, but I'm knocked out at this point. I don't even know what's going on. Couldn't you sue the car um deal the car owner or something because the seatbelt shouldn't have popped. I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> I don't know what my mom and them did if they got some money out of it. Either way, I didn't see nothing. There, you know what I'm saying? But you know. Um, so I laid in the middle of the road, and this guy named Rashawn Trap. Mm -hmm. He almost hit me. He uh, plays professional baseball now. He almost hit me with his hummer because he thought I was a dead deer in the road. Wow! And from what he say, he say that you know I got up, I walked to his car. And he said he was freaking out, and he sat me up against his um, rim of his hummer, and he called the ambulance, and I got to the hospital. Now when I got to the hospital, I didn't know nothing. The only person number I could remember was my wife. Hey. I didn't know her name. I didn't know nothing. I just remember that number. They called my wife. My wife, she hang up. Called my grandmother. She must have been frantic. I could, I could not. You know what? I, I, I never asked my wife about that day. I never mm. asked her because it was just, it was just crazy. And um, they gave me about twelve days to live. Mm. They gave me about twelve days to live because they said I had swelling in my brain, blood in my brain. Like they, they wasn't expecting for me to make it at all. I was in ICU for a long time. Grandma um, prayers. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Matter of fact, what's crazy was. I had so many people come to the hospital to see me that uh, my wife, so you know in the ICU, they only let two people come in there. Mm -hmm. And my wife, uh, she wouldn't let nobody else come in there. You know what I'm saying? She was like, I'm not leaving. You know what I'm saying? They gonna have to come in here one at a time. And it's mm -hmm. probably about 60 to 100 people trying to come in there and see me. So wow. they had to come in there one by one to see me. And I was on so much morphine, I would press the button and people would come in and I'd be like, hey, and just, and just go back to sleep. I don't even remember who all came. At man, all, man. But, hard, man. but it's definitely a blessing, man, to be you here. You're still so. here. God oh, had yeah. a plan. So, oh, yeah. how long were you in the hospital for? How long did it take to recover from that? Uh, I was in the hospital probably about a week and a half, two weeks. That's it from all of that? Yeah, about a week and a half, two weeks. Once I started to get back right. Um, and the doctor said it was a miracle. So, they sent me home and they said, hey, look, don't be around any loud noises. They had my head wrapped up. First thing I did, go to a football game. Mm. That was the first thing I did. Did I it affect out. you? I mean, I put earplugs in my ear to like not have the sounds and stuff come to me, and 
I mean, I made it through that, but you know, I had to learn how to like read and stuff, you know, again. read little books and stuff all over again. I had to like, you know, try to look at pictures and get memories and stuff back, but I'm not fully there even to this day. That's what I was going to ask you. Sometimes like, you know, even doing comedy, um, sometimes when I'm on stage, I have to like really think about what's going on and what's saying because sometimes I'll be talking and I'll just forget and I have to bring myself back, even though I might That's make it look That's a part of easy. old age, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, man, it's definitely a blessing, man, to be able to do what I'm doing. Man. That's man. a miracle. Yeah. So, you, all of a sudden, after that, go to the Army, get your strength back, because you didn't tell. Why did you, you go to the Army? Um, I went to, to the his, Army. To get his strength back. No, was he getting in trouble or something uh, I was like bad. that? I was definitely going down the wrong path. Right. Um, man, look, I was... Oh man, it was it was crazy. I would call my wife and I'd be like, "Hold on, I'm about to go on a mission." That's what I would say. We going on a mission, and she'll just hear gunshots in the background, and I hang up the phone. She don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? All I hear is, "Hold on, real quick, I'm about to go on a mission." Boom, you boom, crazy? Boom, boom. You, after you went through a life threatening situation, Yo, I bugged out for a while. I bugged out for. I mean, like it was. Why? I, was, I, I have no idea. I just I just kind of felt like like you're invincible. I just, yeah, I was just like I'm invincible. But like when I say I bugged out, like I was. That was when the Mohawks was uh. Was popping mm -hmm. with everybody. I had, a, I had a red mohawk. I had the I had the nose ring and in my still nose. Like, dude, oh, you, yeah. And you oh, a yeah, black dude? Still, oh yeah, black dude. I was bugging, man. It's crazy, man. It's, wow, that's hard. And even my wife to the day, she'll be like, "What was wrong with you? you like, got like, pictures? What's going on?" Uh, yeah, I think I. Well, I don't know. My wife might have some, but <laughs> I ain't got nothing in my phone, man. I try to leave that. You know, leave that. Well, behind. let me ask you this: When you, I know you said money back, yo, but mm -hmm. after you got into security, I'm gonna jump back into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You basically stayed in security for a while. Yeah, um, yeah. Who else did you, what time stuck out being in security, security that kind of, you remember the most, the craziest time when a fight broke out? Uh, what's the craziest one? NBA Young Boy. I hmm. never forget. What happened? I never NBA forget. Young Boy come up on this show all the time. What the hell did NBA, NBA Young, Young, Young Boy, Boy have going on? Nah, it wasn't him. Not, not man. Yeah, it was. Something. NBA Young Boy <laughs> came to Florence, right? So he came down. So of course we had him already uh, um, assembled our security team or whatever the case was, right? So he come to Florence and he put on a dope performance. Everybody now going crazy. He stands up on this um, on this counter and he just jumps into the crowd. And when I tell you he goes into the crowd, now look, it was probably at least about 3,000 people in there. Mm. They carried him from the front of the stage to the middle in probably like five seconds, right? So me and a couple other people, I'm like, yo, we got to we gotta go get him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we go out there, we go get him, and I'm talking about, I'm a big dude, but I ain't a big dude against 3,000 people. No, you know what I'm saying? Trying to push through all and of this them. Was, um, the place where we was at, it, it used to be an old Walmart that they had gutted out. And, oh. they, and they had made into like, you know, one part of it was a strip club. Another part of it was a big club. It That's was a real dope. big venue, right? So we go out there. So I said, you know, I tell security, I said, look, y'all hold hands. And look, we just about to hit any and everybody. So we just start hitting everybody. Just women, right. dudes, everybody getting hit. Because, like, we trying to get to the front. And, yeah. they, and, I mean, they going stupid. Like, when they see this dude, man, when they when they be seeing Nobody rappers, wants to move. That nobody want to move. They grabbing him. You know, he got these chains and stuff on. And, you know, he's still going there. And, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, come on, bro. You got to chill. But that's crazy. They People going to pop it off and steal that stuff? Man, they throw him, man, they throw him on, uh, they throw him on um, somebody's shoulders. And we just go through the crowd and just boom, boom. Boom, we hitting everybody, man. And I'm I'm looking at him like, man, look, if you ever do that again, I ain't going back out there to get you. I was mm -hmm. tired. I felt like I had just did P90X. <laughs> I ain't like, I was so tired. But um, that was probably like one of the most craziest wow. experiences. Um, another experience that I thought was going to go crazy was when Black Youngster came. What happened? He was cool, actually. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, you would think that by how he is and how he talk and stuff like that, he going to cause some ruckus. But to be honest with you, he was like the most calmest one I've, I've ever been with. Mm. Smart. He ain't really one trying to get in no trouble. That's a smart dude. I don't mm. care what nobody say. That's a smart dude. I, his music, his music is wild, but that's what the people be wanting to hear. Right. But as a person, I man, that's a smart young man, man. That's, okay. That is a smart, dope young man. Yep. That's dope. What happened? Huh? What happened? The situation, that? yeah. Oh, um, man, the women was trying to get to the stage. The women just, you know what I'm saying? The women were just trying to get to the stage, man. And then, you know, some of them be what they do, mm -hmm. you know? And the dude's getting crazy. The dude's getting like, yo, I mean, I know you like youngster, but I'm your man, you know what I'm saying? I'm we, right and, here. You know, so, and you know, with them, they don't care. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? They like, nah, come on, baby, come on on stage. And dudes, they sitting there getting mad. So we having to go to the front of the stage and this thing, no, dude's trying to get up on the stage. So the security team I was with, we ain't play that. We ain't play that at all. So we just hopped down there and you just went to work. You can't be mad at him, you can be mad at your girl. 
yeah, yeah, that's what you would think. But when it people do some crazy stuff over their girl, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, people a lot of men go do dumb stuff, you know, over their girl. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not, not you know, I'm like, bro, if she doing this at the club, she probably doing this outside of the club. So don't really be too mad, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But they don't be candid that time. They got the alcohol in them, mm-hmm. they got the weed in them, whatever else they own in them, and. You know what I'm saying? Some of them dudes be on perks and all the other stuff, and they right. got that superhuman strength. So you know what I'm saying? You know we back there stretching, about to go in, man. So that was a that was a crazy situation. We throwing dudes through doors, through glass. Like I mean, it was it was, it was crazy. So at this time, was this the path that you said? Okay, I want to definitely go full force into security because you were yeah, dealing comedy, with all these comedy people? was nowhere in the picture at this time. Mm. Comedy was nowhere in the picture at this time. Um, the money I was making doing security and stuff like that, it was good money. And mm-hmm. plus, you know, I'm traveling, I'm doing this all stuff and I just got the military. So I'm like, okay, you know. And meeting a lot of Meeting networking, a lot of people who, right. I, who I really listen to and, right. you know, and, you know, I'm riding around with and I'm cool and I've never seen this part of you know, that person, you know, right? So it was, you know, that was definitely dope, man. You know, of course, I'm getting into concert. How many stuff years? Free. How many years did you do it for? About four. And why did you get out? It was just getting too dangerous. It was mm. just, it was just getting entirely too dangerous. Um, you know, what people, was the last call? Uh, money bag, you in Chicago? That was it. Yep. Yeah, mm. we went to Chicago, and um, he didn't do nothing wrong, but it was. You know the Chicago dudes. They just came up and they, Chicago they, don't play. They don't play. Hey man, let me Chicago tell you something. We got play. out of there so fast. I ain't. I ain't never went through a crowd that fast. But what man. did he do? Why it he called didn't do for nothing. that? He didn't do nothing. He, and he why was, he was just doing his music, doing his thing. His entourage wasn't wasn't going crazy. They wasn't talking crazy or nothing. Was they like trying that. to rob him or what no, was they trying I, to do? Well, I don't know. We got out of there quick. We got out of there quick. I have no idea what they was trying to do. But and like I said, I don't know. If he had anything going on before mm-hmm. that, or whatever the case is, because I don't be looking. Because you don't be knowing that sort of on. stuff. I'm just focused on yeah. making sure that you straight. Mm-hmm. I mean, them dudes start coming, you know, coming towards that stage. Hey, hey we gotta get up out of here. We got out of there quick. And as mm-hmm. we was getting in the car, um, it was me and another guy, and you could just see like all the dudes coming out in the club and stuff like that. I'm like, they didn't start shooting nothing like I that. Was but about I'm just to say. like, but I'm just like, bro, this is, you know, what I'm saying this is crazy. Like, I don't, I don't want to do this. So, you know, yeah. after my wife, you know, I told my wife about a lot of this stuff, and you know, she, she knew about like, everything. She was yeah. like, hey man, look, you got to find something else to do. Do you this, have any kids? No kids. Three okay. dogs. Yeah, three dogs. <laughs> three dogs. Yeah. Not yet, but um, yeah. I was, so I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna just call this quits because I don't want to be out here trying to protect nobody else doing what I'm supposed to do. And mm-hmm. They gonna come to me first because mm-hmm. they got to get me out the way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Were you the bigger one? Hmm? You were you the biggest um, security guard? Oh yeah, it was me. Yeah. Me and another guy. I mean, we both, you know, yeah. big dudes. So and these dudes are small. They like, mm-hmm. oh no, I already know I can't beat him. So mm-hmm. we got to put him shoot. down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we got to put him down first. And I don't care how big you is. I don't want no bullet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I was just like, nah, man, I got to get out this type of lifestyle, man. Plus, you know, I and I was goofy at the same time. So even though I was around them, I would still be cracking jokes. You know what I'm saying? Laughing, got them laughing and stuff like that. So the comedy was already there. I just ain't tap into it yet because, I, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, even in school. So mm-hmm. I just ain't really tap into it and really think about, like, you know, I can pursue this career and do what I want to do and have fun and make a little money, on, you know, on it, you know, at the same mm-hmm. time. Let me ask you, you are. Uh so you go from helping all the rappers to on the stage last night with uh, Eddie, Griffin. Eddie Griffin. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, like like, and you up there really holding your own. Oh yeah, man, I have you got fun. Jokes, you got jokes about going this to the uh, join, getting out of football. Yeah, going to the choir, uh, uh, getting into the uh, band. Yeah. Uh, all, all this, stuff. all this all stuff. stuff, all yeah. real stuff. Yeah. Um, enjoyed the hell out of it, man. Um, just when was your first time getting on stage? Um, my first time getting on stage was in Atlanta. What, went, at, well, was your Atlanta well, Comedy well, Club? First, yeah, the Atlanta Comedy. Let's Theater. go. Um, and how long ago was that? Uh, this was probably about two and a half years ago, maybe. And how long after been... you getting out of security was this? Oh, about five months. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was doing comedy five months before I started traveling. So yeah. what made you, okay, after getting out of security, you said, okay, I'm going to go into comedy. Was that your first choice? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was, um, um, it was a, you know, a couple of comics in my city and they was doing um, these, these contests and shows mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I went to one. I said, okay, I'm going to try it out. I went to my first one. Went to my first one and I won. My first time doing comedy. So mm-hmm. I went back again. I kept winning it. So I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? This is dope. Might have so. I, so I reached out to a comedian on stage. Um, the first dude I started um, traveling with, um, Capone. Okay. And, you know, he asked me to come to Atlanta. 
I went to Atlanta. I did five minutes. And after the show, he was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? You want to go on the road with me or whatever? So I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I started going around, started learning. Now, at that time, I was a good comic, but I wasn't structured. Mm -hmm. I was all over the place. I was talking about this, talking about that, talking about that, but I had to learn how to get structured. And once I started getting structured, um, I started becoming a beast. You know what I'm saying? So I started getting recognition from. And what was your name the first time you started comic? Was it always, always the Hulk? Yeah, yeah. It's Let me always stop been the Hulk. this right now. I got to stop this while I got this thought. It just popped in my head. <laughs> and once it popped in, I got to go with it. Yeah, it's I know how that stuff. is. It's real good stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to call out Country Wayne and I'm going to call out Eddie Griffith because what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep Mike Bliss. And hug the comedian for security while they save money. <laughs> and they got these niggas with them. I ain't no fool. I know what's going on. That's an old move I would do. So Country Wayne and Eddie Griffin is basically trying to figure out ways to cut costs. So they bring, and it's a very it's a very smooth idea. You got a guy like you that comes, you are very experienced. I ain't gotta worry about nobody coming up on me while I'm talking or nothing because my boy right there. You know nah, what I'm man, saying? Nah, whatever. <laughs> and then Mike, he come through the same way you did. Hey, what's up, man? I ain't really into comedy, but I can do this. Next thing you know, y'all funny as hell. God give you the blessing and right. gonna give you the give you the gift. But these niggas standing in the back of Eddie Griffin and Country Wayne. Nah, And they man. sitting back chilling like, yeah, Let me I got tell you him something. Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. With, with Eddie, bro, it ain't nothing. Like, when I tell you he is one of the most, and I ain't just saying this because I'm with him. I ain't just saying this. When I tell you he is one of the most genuine people I've probably met in this game, you would think that somebody, uh, you know, at his level in his career, being a, you know, a living legend, it would be something, you know, what you would probably think like, oh, he bougie or he this, that, and third. When I tell you, like, he made me part of the family. He made me feel so comfortable. He makes my wife feel so comfortable. He makes sure that I'm straight. He don't let me slack, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's nothing but love there. I I would I would not, you know, take a show or do a show with anybody else who's not even rocking with Eddie. Like that's how I feel. I don't care where, you know, who it is or whether, you know, where I'm trying to go. When I tell you that man take care of me and he makes sure that I'm straight and he has uh taken my career to the next level. I don't care who it is. If you don't rock with Eddie, you don't rock with Hulk. That's how long how you is. been working with him? I've been with Eddie for about a year now. And how did you meet him? Um, I met him, we, I hit up his manager. I, well, actually, I did a show in my city. Mm -hmm. um, his opener um, that, I, that I guess he had at the time couldn't come. Um, I hit up his manager. Um, his manager was like, okay, cool. You know, we'll throw you on the show or whatever. This was in March. Um, I did the show. Everything went real good. A um, couple months went by. I hit up his manager randomly out the blue. Um, I was like, hey, if you, you know, if you guys ever need anybody, you know what I'm saying, let me know. He got back to me within about five minutes. He was like, can you be in the, um, Alabama this Friday? Mm -hmm. I'm in South Carolina, so I'm like, yo, that's a, you know, that's right down the road. And we was going to the Stardome, which is a big comedy club. So we go down there. We did the Friday show. After the first show, you know, I killed it. Went out there and did my thing. I go in the back. Eddie was like, you want to come to Vegas with me? What? What do you mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come to Vegas. I'm about to go buy my ticket right now. So uh -huh. before the um, second um, show, I had him already bought my ticket and everything. Um, and... The rest was history. You mm. know what I'm saying? The rest was history. And, you know, a lot of people try to get to Vegas and get out there and do shows. And I'm like, you throwing me, you know what I'm saying? You throwing me the alley hoop. I'm about to mm. dunk it. So I go out there, I do my thing. And, I mean, you know, I just been with him ever since, man. Because um, what stood out to me um, last night was the fact that cause when I've been, we've been to um, Arlington Improv many times. And the headliner sometimes would have three, four comics before. And that's, yeah. And I'm right. like, why does he only have you? Right. Well, that's just how he like to do his shows. Um, but one thing I will say about um, Eddie is a lot of people want to get on these shows and they want to be with these, you know, these legends, you know what I'm saying, these legends, these OGs and stuff like that. But you got to remember, Eddie is a beast on stage. And to go before him and try to, you know, do what you got to do because he going to come out and go ham. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's that's a known fact. Mm -hmm. So um, I go out there and um, he say he like. He liked the way I do things. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He liked the way I control the crowd, the way how I'm, I'm out there having fun. I'm mm -hmm. not necessarily thinking about trying to make everybody laugh. I'm mm -hmm. out there and I'm genuinely Telling having story. fun. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I make sure that I go out there and do my job. Right. That way I get the crowd up. I get everybody laughing. Okay, this is just a little taste. Now you about to get hit in the mm -hmm. head with the, you know what I'm saying, with the OG. I bring him out and, you know, our show is just dope. Funny from beginning to the end. You know what I'm saying? So... 
And so how many work. comics had you worked with prior to Eddie? Um, so I've, to get you prepared for Eddie. Um, I've done shows with Capone. Mm -hmm. I've done shows with uh, Gary Owen. I've mm -hmm. done shows with Bill Bellamy, mm -hmm. Guy Torrey, uh, John Witherspoon. Um, what else? Uh, it's a lot of names. Pierre. It's a it's a nice really? list. So you did a lot of people before you actually got to Eddie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. In that Eddie. short span of time. What's crazy is like I'm. I just feel so blessed to be able to be doing what I'm doing because I know comics who've been doing comedy 10 plus years mm -hmm. and haven't been able to get out there where they need to be at. Right. There's some funny people out there in the world, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and all of them deserve their shot. Let me put that out there. But, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they want stuff handed to them. Mm -hmm. They, they, they want to just be like, hey, I do comedy. I'm funny. Put me on the show. I'm like, nah, hey, look here, you ain't even got to pay me. Just give me the experience and let me exactly. go out there and do my thing. And if you like it, bring me back again. Mm -hmm. And every time that's what happened because with, because with me, nobody expects for me to do and say the things that I say. Like, I'm not just up there talking. I'm dancing. I'm jumping around. I'm, You know what I'm saying? You, you think I'm going to talk about like how big I am or something like that. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm giving you the real the straight, like, me coming up, what happened with me and my grandmother, you know what I'm saying, like, the band stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm out there just being crazy and having fun, man, that's the, that's the big thing about it, and that's why I think that, um, that, um, Eddie is so, uh, that me and him are so tight. How, what was it like working with, um, Gary Owens? Um, Gary Owens was cool. He was cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, he cool in my book. Um, you know, he we went out there, we did the show. Um, at least the white boy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really know him. I don't watch him like that. I seen him on a few movies. Think like a man. Uh, I seen him doing some stuff where he was at the store on Ride Alone. Mm -hmm. I think that was yeah. it with Kevin yeah. Hart. Yeah. He's funny, man. The boy ready now. I ain't gonna lie to you. He ready, he's ready. You know funny. what I mean? He's, he's funny, ready, man. ready. To and <laughs> to go in, to go into some of those um, the rooms, and you know. Everything that he be doing, man, the theaters and, you know, all the shows that he got going on, man. He's hilarious, man. I love Gary, man. Shout out to Gary. Bro. Yeah, to be a white guy to be able to cross over because he crossed over. And, and, and. You see what oh I'm yeah. saying? Oh, yeah. He crossed oh over yeah. because he's able to, do, he oh got, yeah. uh, our oh people yeah. love him. Love him. Oh, yeah. And, and, you know, there's a lot. Of, I mean, I'm not a Seinfeld type of guy. Mm. But he has a way of coming across to where I, I like to hear him do his thing for, mm -hmm. him, you know, and, and thing, I think that's hard. And the thing about him, you can tell, like, he's not, that's not. Uh, persona that he's trying to put on. Mm -hmm. That's him. Like That's him. he 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 keep it. You know he keep it Gary on, but he keep it black. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So it's just it's just cool, man. He's very humble. He wasn't stuck up. He wasn't like okay, man, okay, yeah. We want to show good job. Like he talked. We took pictures. You know he gave me you know some advice. Real real cool dude, man. Everybody who I have met, they ain't, they ain't really you know, rub me off the wrong yeah. way. So you, know you haven't saying? got, because I've heard stories from other comedians that, um, especially when you're opening for other comedians, that some comedians can turn around and try to give you rules. Oh, yeah. As in, okay, you can't tell this type of jokes, you can't do this, you can't do that, because that's what they're going to probably do, or you can't try to upstage them, so to say. You can't right. be funnier than them. Have you ran into that? Yeah, I most definitely. I've definitely ran into that. And, you know, um, anybody who take that the wrong way, um, all I got to say is, man, stay stay creative because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, you got to respect the headliner. If he's talking about something and he don't want you to talk about it, you got to respect that. I've had that happen a couple of times where I've probably talked about two or three topics or like some jokes or whatever. And the headliner come out there and say it. And then the next show, he'll be like, hey, look, um, you know, I'm kind of sort of talking about that. You know, try to, you know, not talk about that. And mm -hmm. I say, bet. Let me go to the pen and pad real quick. Let me move some stuff around. I ain't going to talk about it because, you know, I got... You know, I got jokes and material for days, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And then, too, you know, I improv a lot, too. So, I mean, it ain't nothing to me, you know. It's, you know, it is what it is. You know, you got to respect the headliner. You got to respect the That's headliner. True. Because a lot of people want to get in this game and they want to do comedy and – They'll say, hey, look, I got 15, 20 minutes, and that's the only 15, 20 minutes that they got. You know, um, I always prepare myself for 30, 45, because you never know. I've had times um, where I had to get on stage, and the headliner was probably 15 minutes late, and I got to do an extra 15 minutes mm -hmm. on top of the 20 that I just that did. that content. So um, it's very important. So if you're trying to get in this game and you're trying to become a comedian, uh, don't just run off with just the material that you got. Keep constantly writing because it's stuff to talk about. It's so much going on in the world right now. You got material. You got it, there's so much going on in life. You got stuff to talk about. 
all day. And you say you do skits, but which one to you is harder? Harder for you to do stand-up comic or to do your skits? Because I know some comedians who only do skits and don't do the stand-up um, and vice versa. So which one is harder to you? I would say the stand-up. Mm. I would say the stand-up because for, for one, you're right there in front of their faces. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then plus two, people are so sensitive. Even though I got a nice following on social media, there's still a lot of people who haven't heard of me. Mm -hmm. So just like how when I came out last night, I know when I, I already know when I come out, like people are not going to be like, oh, oh, the comedian. So what I do, I walk back off the stage and I get everybody. You do that back. every I, time? I do that, I do that every time. That When you every, did that set. last night, that was the, I want to say that's the first time I've ever seen anybody do that. that. And I, I looked at him like, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, but do you see like the difference from when I well, first came Well, when you out? went out of there that time, I was looking at you. I said, "Hell, I might be for the go." You know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm not going to shut up here. And I, and you know, and I said, "You know, maybe he's right." And you, know you know what, what I'm saying? But I didn't. I, I said, "You know what? I'm going to stay because Eddie ain't came out yet." My <laughs> wife, she <laughs> was about to stay. But see, look, but see, look though. You know, I never take offense to that because I already know it's coming. Yeah. You see this big dude walking up there. You like, man, look here, man, look. I'm going to need at least about $20 back. You know what I'm saying? You know, seeing this shit right here. But I know that people are going to think that. And I want you to think that because that's a blessing to me because now when I open my mouth, you're going to be like, okay, all mm -hmm. right. Um, you know, because I ain't starting off with, hey, how you doing? All that birthdays and all that stuff. Man, I don't care nothing about none of that. Hey, yeah. look here. Let me go. You know what I'm saying? Jump straight into it. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? I man. like that. I like that, man. South Carolina, man. Shout out yeah. to my boy Dunk Master down there, man. That's my guy right there, Osage mm -hmm. uh, Thomas, man. And, uh, Man, you 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 look. Hey, man, I'm proud. To, I'm proud to have you on Boss Talk 101, and just the fact of you, you know, being on that stage and being able to keep the audience entertained and mm -hmm. and keeping them where they need to be right. for you know Eddie to come out and just you two. Like I said, I was glad it was just two. Right. Now I was surprised, but happy as hell. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see nothing else. Right. Yeah, because we were you know looking at like, each other like, okay, yeah. is another coming? Yeah, coming I mean, out in the white in the in the white suit. Is he gonna get up there? No, yeah. he's just holding the light for Eddie. That's his brother. <laughs> it's a okay, I'm happy. Right. Because I knew that I get right to what I'm coming to see and deal. Well, you know how men are. Right, right. So right. you know when it's five of them, then I'll be like, damn. When I get to him, I might be asleep because I'm old. You know, <laughs> I like I you know I'm not never against doing uh, three or four man comedy yeah, shows, but I like, like but I like doing you know two man shows because for one like I know how our show is I know what's you know I know what's expected of me to go out there, but I care more about I don't care about the money I don't care about all the extra stuff I want people to enjoy the show. I know that people aren't there to see me. I have people that come there that follow me on social media. And they be like, oh yeah, we follow you, but I know who y'all really here to see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But before we get to him, you got me. And mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that you get, you know, you did your a great money's job. worth, man. You I'm did a great sure. you did. Good, damn good job, man. I ain't going to lie. I had a good time. Um, I ain't, it, it was great. I, I've been up there. This what we've been up there a lot here lately. So yeah. just just being in there, interacting with you guys, man. And y'all so, gonna be back in Dallas in June. Yeah, so, June. So yeah, we come for to, Addison, which is Addison, right up the street. Yeah, we come to Addison and we come into Houston. Y'all going to Houston? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got Houston, so we come. Man, up. I might be up there, yeah, so you yeah, know. Yeah. When are y'all going to show. Houston? I didn't, I didn't um, look up Houston's. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, he just knows. I know going. June, you're gonna yeah. be in Addison, yeah. so all y'all who want to check out Eddie Griffin and Hulk. The comedian is going to be June. I don't remember the date, but look up Addison and Prov, and, and, and you can yeah, come check it's it out. Definitely, it's definitely a dope show. Um, you definitely gonna get your money's worth. Um, you definitely gonna laugh from uh, start to finish, and um, you definitely gonna enjoy yourself. But if you're sensitive, stay home. Yeah, cause so y'all, y'all. He was apologizing last oh, week. He, <laughs> he, well, he didn't mean it. That nigga didn't mean that. I sit there and watch that. I said he don't mean it. that. Nigga don't give. <laughs> if you say, he you, say what he say, and you gonna have to deal facts, with man. that. Cause you know, you know, a lot of people they come to comedy shows, man, and they really don't come to enjoy themselves. They don't come to enjoy themselves. They come and they they just they. So what they know, come to do then? To get I offended, come to enjoy to get offended, myself. To get offended. To get offended. I've because, seen a few of them do cause, that. Cause, because, matter of fact, if you look around the room sometimes and people say certain things, that one little thing will have them messed up the whole show. But it be the truth. People don't want to hear the truth. Have, have, have you, did somebody run up on you out there before? Have they came up on stage hey, yet? Hey, or have yeah, you I'm seen a, them I'm try a, to I'm a, attack I'm go, Eddie? Hey, look. Oh, no, bad, let, 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 me, let me tell you something. <laughs> bad night. Let me tell you something. We here for the fun <laughs> and we here to make everybody laugh. But don't bring your ass up there on that stage. Because this is not the, you know, this is not the crew you want to mess with. You, you will, 
You go into the hospital. You go into the hospital. <laughs> Don't try to run up on my dog because I'm out there watching <laughs> at all times. When I look at, I'm a comedian. Then I'm going into you know security my security mode. mode. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and you know um, you were missing last night after he came on and I'm looking around. Oh no, I was no, there. You were there. Oh no, I was there. I you thought ain't you gonna went, see me. I thought you went into the back room oh, chilling. No. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I'm definitely um I'm definitely watching my dog because even though even though I'm still young in the game, I'm still a student. You know mm, what I'm saying? So I'm still watch. I'm still learning a lot of stuff. Even though people might say you good, yo, you holding your own, I'm still learning because you you got to remember, I'm only three years in. Yeah, I'm only three years in, so like, Doing I'm still, you know, I'm, you know, I'm still wet behind the heels. But let me tell you something, because I already know how my dog about to get up there and tell the he truth. Gonna talk. And some people gonna get, that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying they gonna get a little rumbled up a little bit. And let me tell you something, you better not run up on that stage. And if you run up on that stage on me, let me tell you something, uh, <laughs> my comedy career will boom so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna be so, like that. Boy need to be an action movie. Oh yeah, movies. oh yeah, movies, <laughs> movies, and everything. So. Y'all be y'all be smoothing it over because I seen um because there was one that I saw that got real intense. The guy he kept going back and forth with the guy because he kept picking on this guy, right. not Eddie Griffin. I don't remember who it was. And the guy he got so yeah, DL he, shout out DL he got so serious where he was like, all right, now quit, just quit. And that's what the guy was telling the comedian, just quit. Okay, just stop. Just I had stop. that happen one time. I don't really try to mess with people because I know for a fact, like my image and how I look as a man. If I say something to you, you gonna ain't if if your lady laughing, you gotta say something. Mm, you gotta yeah, say yeah, something. So yeah. I don't really try not to really mess with people like that. But I did have that happen one time. I only mm -hmm. had it happen one time when this dude started talking on stage. Um, well, you know, while I was on stage, and I had to get him. I, you know, I went in on him, and he got to the point where he was like, I yeah. was like, nah, you started this shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna keep it going, but you know, at the end, I, I was like, nah, man, I was just joking, try to like bring it down, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't, people pay their money to come to shows, yeah. man, and you know, enjoy themselves. So if you come to comedy shows, man, and you trying to start stuff, man, just stay home, man, just stay home, because. You know, people come there to, you know, some people come there to really enjoy themselves. And, you know, a lot of people like Eddie. He got a real strong fan base. Mm -hmm. I got a nice, strong fan mm -hmm. base. People and he had there. a lot of black, white, all different Everybody. races who Everybody. came. Everybody. Because some comedy shows I go to, it was only black folks in the crowd. Right. So that's one thing I loved about it. And like I was saying, when you when, when comedians calm down um, the the viewers, they'll be buying them drinks. Oh, because they know they'll be really picking on right. that person. They'll be right. like... Let's go ahead and give him a shot. Or go ahead and give him such a well, switch. Don't buy me no drink. Just get one of my t-shirts because uh, <laughs> you know, if I try to slip me nothing, then you know, you yeah. know, you know, I say my drink. But uh, but nah, man. You know, it's 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 cool, man. You know, don't don't comedy is different. Yeah, it is. comedy is different, man. Um, that's why, like, even when I started talking about, you know, certain you know certain topics, like you know, uh, when I started talking about like my gay family and stuff like that, that's why I say, hey, look, I'm just talking about my family. I'm not talking about. Nobody mm -hmm. else. I ain't trying to dis, you know, disrespect nobody because you got to be real careful about what you say, man. Because you can't. Get canceled. No, Eddie man. wasn't. Eddie was only Eddie last wasn't. night. Well, Eddie, Eddie, you know, what I'm <laughs> saying? Eddie, Eddie, yeah, he Eddie jumped 40, in Eddie, on it. Oh yeah, Eddie, forty years in, man. He's he's you know, he don't care. living legend. Is you know. he really gonna retire? I, I have no idea. Because <laughs> when no he idea. said, that, I was like, no, you're not. You playing? I mean, you got to think though. Forty years though, I, I would probably, I would probably retire too. You know, what I'm saying after forty years, you know. It gets tiring, you know, and you know he's he's up there. What you know, mm. how, how much higher he gonna go? You know, yeah, you're right, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. How can people get a hold of if they trying to reach out? Um, you know, what I'm saying you can reach out to me on TikTok and Instagram at Hulk the Comedian. Make sure y'all follow the page, um, H U L K T H E Comedian. Um, if you wanna, you know, you know, for bookings and stuff like that, is Hulk the Comedian at Yahoo.com. And man, you know, what I'm saying I'm not. Um, I come everywhere, man. I don't care whether it's I don't just want to go to black rooms. I go to, you know, all my materials for everybody, anybody, yeah. any and everybody, man, um, except for churches. Just, <laughs> I've, I've had a couple churches try to get me, and I'm like, hey, uh, nah. Yeah, you said yeah, you do. do clean content, too. Last night you asked. Yeah, well, I asked, I asked that question because I try to set the mood. I can do clean. I can do clean. I can do up there without cussing or doing anything else, but don't nobody want to hear that. People mm -hmm. want to hear the real dirty, gritty, and stuff like that, but I just asked because... Once you give me, you know, the option of which one you want me to do, that's where it's gonna go. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But either way, I'm gonna have fun regardless. And you gonna, um, I do all of my material uh, three, four different ways. Yeah. So I can talk about the same thing and just move some words around, but I'm still saying the same thing. You but know definitely saying? dope, man. Love it, man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Oh yeah, man. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. Shout out to yeah, Boss Talk, man. Boss Talk One Hundred One from South Carolina to Dallas, Texas, back to Vegas. Holla at your boy. 
It's a unique hustle. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. Man.